Hello, everybody. I'm Tess Harris. I'm based in London. I'm the chief executive of the Polycystic Kidney Disease Charity in the United Kingdom. And I'll be talking to you about how patient organizations such as ourselves can help with core outcome set development. I'm also a kidney patient on dialysis, awaiting a kidney transplant. So I have, uh, I wear two hats often as both a patient group rep, but also a participant in uh, core outcome set development. So just quickly, our PKD or polycystic kidney disease and our charity, we've been established since 2000. We're small with four and a half members of staff. And uh, uh, we, we're there to improve the lives of what we estimate is 70,000 people, children and adults affected by the condition. In common with many conditions like uh, ours, uh, genetic inherited condition, mutations in the gene cause uh, impact and affect multiple organs. And um, that not notably the kidneys, but also the liver, the brain, the heart, the bowel, and uh, the pancreas. It's the most, in fact, it's a, although it's uh, fairly rare, it's still the most common inherited kidney disease in the world. It's multi-organ with a high socioeconomic burden. I also wear a hat as PKD International Global Alliance president. Uh, we helped co-found that a number of years ago. So, oh. Over the years, our focus of research has been, thanks Heather, has been to stop the relentless growth of cysts in the kidneys uh, and the other organs, but particularly the kidneys, and slow the, the relentless decline of kidney function. So that's been the main focus. And um, just to give you an idea of the scale of the problem, PKD accounts for one in 10 people worldwide who've had a kidney transplant are on dialysis. This condition has been known about for centuries, has been studied for many, many decades by scientists and clinicians worldwide, but as yet we're still a, an incurable condition without uh, many treatments. Thank you, Heather. So defining outcomes has been a major challenge in our condition. Only one licensed drug to date, and that was very recently. Very, very few clinical trials have been run into our condition. And that's because when you look across the, the outcomes that are used in trials, they're highly variable, as Heather has mentioned earlier. Different outcomes using different studies, unable to compare and contrast the treatments and therapies that have been tried out. Emphasis often on non-clinically important outcomes, such as um, urine volume or copeptin, not really the things that we as patients experience in our, in, in our daily and throughout our lives. And currently there's a, there's a look at some composite outcomes, but amazingly we still have no validated patient reported outcome set. So moving on, in 2015, I was invited to join a new group that was, that was set up in Australia called the Standardized Outcomes in Nephrology or SONG group. This was, a, this was a fabulous initiative, which and I was um, invited and recommended because of my, my activity in the international PKD community. And I'd also co-chaired the very first patient carers group to participate in a major international consensus meeting in 2014. So I had a history of involvement and patient engagement in our condition PKD. At the time, I actually didn't know anything about core outcomes. But I willingly joined SONG because I knew the, the other members of the steering group. And I was also pleased to hear that we, PKD, would have our own core outcome set. They started with the initial ones covering transplantation, hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis. Then one began in children. And finally, this year, we have managed to publish our own SONG PKD core outcome set, which is a major milestone for us all. And Heather, you can show here just. Uh, snapshot of what our core outcome set. Those of you who've been involved in core outcomes will recognize this type of graphic. You'll see at the core of it, we have four significant core outcomes that we want to see reported in all trials. And then the whole range of other trials, not just clinical outcomes, but, but outcomes that affect patients and carers with this condition, everything from hospitalization through to financial impact, life participation, fatigue, and so on. 
So this has been, um, for me particularly, a fantastic journey of, of learning and, and reinvigoration uh, for, for future research. So let me just tell you how we're supporting the song initiative and really aiming to make core outcome set the norm in nephrology. By way of background in nephrology, we, we are the, the ology or the discipline with the fewest clinical trials across all disciplines. We're particularly underfunded and um, one of the global gains, get, aims for the nephrology community, the kidney community, is to increase the number of clinical trials. And so these core outcome sets are really, really important. New uh, setting, uh, new um, uh, metrics for setting future trials and making um, and really elevating, elevating the standard in nephrology. So our contribution is from day one being a member of the steering group. Maureen still explain in more detail about what that involves, and being involved also in all the songs bringing our own knowledge and experience of kidney disease and especially our condition, helping promote the Delphi surveys through our um, social media networks, which are extensive and international, and also helping to recruit patients and carers to attend the workshops that Maureen has described earlier. And everywhere we go, we help promote song at conferences or in clinical study groups and research groups. And we continue to sell song. We like to sing from the same song hymn sheet, as we say. And but what are the uh, Maureen has explained some of the challenges um, in actually in the actual operations of running a, a core outcome set. But we have also found just generally it's been quite difficult to explain core outcome sets to patients, clinicians, and researchers, and hence the need to constantly keep shouting from the rooftops about it. We found that it's been difficult to communicate to entrenched research networks who are a bit unfamiliar with core outcome sets or even suspicious. I once remember being in a meeting where someone, a, a clinician researcher said, are you trying to impose new outcomes on us? And we've been doing this for years, don't you know? Um, we know it's really important to demonstrate that these are very feasible and very usable and to minimize the effort involved. We're not asking people to completely throw their protocols out of the, out of the room but we want them to, to include the core outcome sets in, in their future thinking from now on. And of course, we recognize there are always conflicting agendas from researchers, from funders, and other stakeholders. But we try at all times to, buy, to get buy-in and trust from every stakeholder and integrate core outcome sets into the research infrastructure. All I would say in finishing is, if you are asked to take part, don't hesitate to say yes. I didn't. <laughs> 